Now to understand this, one of the things you can really think about is how we process this information. This, by the way, makes an awesome exam question. So I want you to think about our thought process when we're trying to accomplish a goal. Because you can really think of it as a three-step process. It's an iterative process. But it's a three-step process called goal, execute, evaluate. What is that? We form a goal. We choose and execute actions to try to make progress toward that goal. And after we are done executing those actions, we evaluate whether they worked, whether we have reached the goal. And it's iterative, so we repeat until our ultimate goal is reached. Now, how does this work? Well, it's a very strong interaction with short-term memory as well as long-term memory. Let's look at some examples because that I think is going to make it more obvious. Buying flowers. I'm going to sit up here so I can actually point. All right, so you find out that your friend is sick in the hospital and you're like, oh, I think I'm going to send my friend some flowers and you know, cheer him or her up. Okay, so you want to send flowers to your friend, right? So here's our primary goal. Send flowers to a friend. And of course, you are in front of your laptop or tablet or something. So what is it that you need to do? Okay, well, I want to send flowers to my friend. Well, I need to find someone to deliver them, right? So I want to find a delivery website. How do I accomplish that? What's the first thing you need to do? Open a web browser. I'm sorry, what? <clears throat> if you go back so far, you have to turn on your computer. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> Depending on where you are. All right, so oh, we'll just jump up to open a web browser because it's more interesting and it's already written down. All right, so you open your web, web browser. Now you have your browser open. Now what? Start typing on the search bar. You want to start typing. You said start typing what? You search. Do. You do a search. Right, so you may go to Google you, if you have the little Google search thing on the top. Right, so let's say you go to the Google web page. All right, so you go to the Google web page. Now what? You can type flower delivery into Google. Now let's break it down a little bit more. OK, you're at the Google page. You want to type in flower delivery. What do you do? OK, you click where you want to type. You type. And you hit enter or go and you grab your mouse and click search or however you're used to doing it. Now, what I want to point out, I think I can actually reach up here. Our main goal is send flowers to a friend. We also have sub goals. And those sub goals follow the same process. You form a goal, you execute it, and you evaluate it. So, our primary goal is to send flowers to our friend. Once we get to this point, we need to find a flower delivery company, someone who will deliver it. To do that, we need to do a search in Google. These are different goals. To do our search in Google, we insert the text, we type. We look to see, have we accomplished that task? At that point, what, what task have we accomplished? What goal have we accomplished? We found a list of, hopefully, flower delivery sites, flower delivery companies. Have we reached our goal of sending flowers to a friend? Not yet. So we have accomplished one of our sub goals. We have not accomplished our main goal yet. So what do we do? We, re we repeat. We evaluate and repeat. So now we have our list. What do we want to do? Select one. We want to visit it. So we go, we point, we click, we go visit it. 
Ultimately, we are going to choose a flower delivery service. You have to go decide what flowers you're going to have. Enter the address until when are you going to stop? Right, when you have accomplished your goal of sending flowers to a friend. You have ordered it, you've paid for it, you're done. But again, we've gone through that three-step phase. Now, usually at this point, I like to give you another example. Have you guys go through buying an airline ticket? But instead of doing that in class, since we're running out of time, sort of, yeah, we are running out of time, right? Hold on. How many, how many more slides? I have a few more slides. I'll have you do, if we have time, we'll come back to that. But I, what I want you to do is to think about what would be the same process with buying an airline ticket. Things like, why would you want to buy an airline ticket? I mean, you can keep going back and back. I want to go to Paris in the spring. Why? Because it sounds good. All right, so what are some of our design implications? You want to provide clear paths to your goals. You want to help your users whenever possible. When it comes to executing, you want to make sure that you provide your user with sufficient and clear information so that they can choose the action that they need to choose to accomplish their goal. Evaluate. You want to provide feedback that shows progress so that it makes it easier for your user to evaluate where am I in terms of accomplishing my sub goals and accomplishing my primary goals. And this is one that's very important to me personally. Allow your users to go back. Preferably using the back button. That's my own personal. I hit the back button for everything. Knowing when it doesn't work. So here's a nice example. What do you like about this? It tells you where you are in the process. Does it have a nice scent, as Johnson would call it? It actually does. Shows you where you've been, where you are, where you're going. Very, very nice to have some breadcrumbs like that. Makes it much easier for users to understand where they are and to focus on their goals. Now here's something that we always forget. Again, as a result of as users, what are we focused on? Our goals. We've accomplished our goals. We're done. Right? Maybe. Sometimes we forget things like cleanup steps. They can be kind of important. Now, how many of you have, assuming you don't have automatic headlights like I do now, so my battery doesn't run out, you're in a rental car or a friend's car. Right? They don't have automatic headlights, but it's, you know, you, you, you turn them on as you're driving and it's, you know, kind of dusk. You park, you leave. You don't turn off the headlights. Who's done that? Okay, the rest of you, you have cars that have automatic headlights, right? Oh, it beeps. Come back. Turn me off. Well, see, that's a good reminder. It helps you clean up. Okay, how many of you have gone to a photocopier and there's paper in it? The last person who photocopied stuff left their very important business documents with all of their bank information for you to take. Does that happen to anybody? Not necessarily the bank information. You go to a photocopier, you see a bunch of stuff there. Now, why do you think that is? What was their goal? It was to make these photocopies, right? They made the photocopies, they're done, they're grabbing copies, off they go. What do they forget? The rest of it, to clean things up, clean up, clean up steps. <clears throat> of course, there's our favorite closing parentheses, closing quotation marks. When you're coding, it could be a semicolon. You know, your entire program will not compile and won't work, and you can't figure out why, and it's because you're missing one semicolon. I know, it's so fun, right? Some of you are looking at me like, I'm never going to code again. That sounds awful. 
So when we have interactive systems, we want to help remind our users to have cleanup steps, to make sure they engage in those cleanup steps. And this can actually be pretty serious. If you are at a computer in the lab and you have just made your car payment, and you have your bank account information, you're logged into your bank account. Oh, man, I made my car payment. Thank God. You get up and go to lunch with your buddy. What's wrong with that? Yeah, no, ooh, ooh, look at this. I can see how much money this guy has. Oh, look at that. I can hit him up for a loan. Yeah, not such a good idea. But I mean, I can tell you, every semester students tell me, I go into the computer lab and there are people who haven't logged out. <clears throat> their account is still logged in. Not such a good idea. So you want to make sure that computers or digital products can issue warnings. All right, so things like you've been idle for five minutes. Should I log you out? That's your bank. Things such as that. Keeping in mind that, again, you're going to have to balance things out because it can get really annoying. You know, like my.fiu.edu. You've been idle for, was it, was it 20 minutes now? 20 minutes. You're out. Do you want to stay in? Yes, 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 yes. Still out. Yeah, you got to make sure it works too. So we want to remind our users of cleanup steps. Even things such as, don't turn me off yet. I'm doing updates and I will ruin your computer if you turn me off right now. Things like that. Annoying as they can be, you need to have that balance. When are they needed? <clears throat> 